This is the Tom Anderson Show, broadcasting live from the KVNT studios, 7 to 9 a.m., Monday through Friday. Well, don't mess with Texas. Sixth-generation Texan Dan Crenshaw joins us. He is currently a congressman from the great state of Texas. We all know him. If you watch TV, if you're a follower of Patriots, you know Dan Crenshaw as a former Navy SEAL. He has written a book, Fame, Blame, and the Raft of Shame, and I can't wait to interview him on this. I'm going to purchase it. I know some loved ones who have kids who may enjoy it. We want to get into why he wrote it, but first, Congressman Crenshaw, former SEAL, have you ever been to Alaska? Because I know there's some training that intermittently you folks get sent up to do. Yeah, yeah, and and thanks for having me, by the way. It's great to be on the air with your listeners. And uh, I have been to Alaska. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, I was there, let's see, 2007, probably, when that, when that was. Uh, so we go to Kodiak as part of our training, our winter warfare training. And uh, we spent about a month there. It, and it's, it's one of the trips that everybody looks forward to the most, um, d- despite how miserable they make you. I mean, you know, one of the, one of the, um, one of the things you have to do is, is jump in either an ice-cold river or the ocean. Uh, we had to jump in the ocean because they're, they're, all of the rivers were frozen. Uh, we were there in January. And um, you got to stay in this water. And the water there is, is in the 30s. I mean, it's, it's freezing. Um, not quite frozen, but pretty dang cold. And the idea is that you, you, know, you need to practice being able to warm yourself up uh, after being submerged in the water for, uh, I think it was five minutes. And you have to practice being able to get through your gear warm yourself with a with a little stove that you know you carry on your pack and and uh and then survive so it's <laughs> despite despite doing exercises like that we love that trip it was you, great. And, you, and you still think fondly of alaska i was about to say you may not like alaska now but no that is cold i i got my certification for diving in alaska in you know in the winter and it sucked in juno and so it, but i had a dry suit on so no thank you but i do thank you for this book fame blame and the raft of shame and you know we, we see you and we report we played some of your clips actually a couple of weeks ago before we knew we were going to have the interview because you're one of the influencers as they say now on social media and you're certainly a leader in the united states what was the impetus what what made you decide i'm going to write a book well it it was a partnership with brave books and parents need a toolkit you know they they need tools to teach their kids with and when it comes to conservative values there's really not a lot of options Uh, there's plenty of left-wing options and they're being inundated with that at bookstores and trying to indoctrinate kids you hear these kind of stories all the time. And um, my book is part of a saga, actually. So when you subscribe, you can go to dan.bravebooks.com and you can subscribe and you get a new book every month. And that's a pretty cool thing because it's a new book every month on a different uh, conservative value. So mine is the fourth in the series. The previous ones are on difficult issues like transgenderism, abortion, uh, the free market and socialism. So and mine's on cancel culture, of course. So a little less controversial as, as far as, as you know, as, as in the grand scheme of things, but um, really important because we're seeing cancel culture rise up in classrooms. We're seeing people um, claim microaggression and therefore bypass uh, normal interactions with people, and it, it's got to stop. It's a, it's a suffocating, it's a suffocating trend on on free speech and in our classrooms, and you got to teach kids the right lessons early. I lean conservative more than my son does. I have a 15-year-old, and he goes to school in in Denver, Colorado. And he wore a shirt that I gave him, Blue Lives Matter, caught my father. His grandpa's a retired colonel, director of the state troopers here in Alaska. And so we're a very pro-cop family and proud of it. And he wore the shirt. He's, I won't say indifferent, but he's not aggressive on that. He just wore it because I gave it to him, and it looked cool. But a a, a couple of kids... Uh, ha- happened to be about five girls were making fun and, and made some comments. And this is in high school. And they said, boy, you're, you know, you're prejudiced and made 
uh, some other nasty things. Anyway, it ended up in uh, administration had to deal with it, and they had to apologize. Uh, you know, geez, and he didn't even have a message on it. It was just the blue flag. That's one example I would say that your book could help, and not with yours on the uh, yours. Your theme may be different than others, but but it may not be with the cancel culture. Maybe it's you can't wear those shirts. That's a cancel. Or we see social media the same. When you get into the abortion or the transgender. Welcome to talk radio. I have an ad agency during the day. We help Clinton candidates like you. But in the morning, my morning gig is this radio show. And I'm a former lawmaker, state rep. And so I, I see this pervasive. We see it in, in in Virginia, in fact, with the governor's race, where there's such a demarcation, abortion, pro-choice, pro-life, critical race theory. Do you think that this is going to end anytime soon? Or do you think that you're going to have a long bookshelf life with these books because it's just a, a, a really polarizing further well i mean cancel culture will not end anytime soon in in a sense it's been around for a very long time people are always looking for cheap ways cheap tactics to to beat their enemies and, and beat their opposition down uh cancel culture is a a new form of that uh well it's not new but but the way we do it is new because of social media and social media isn't going away anytime soon, so, so neither is this. I mean, it, it, the unfortunate reality is, is that it's part of human nature uh, to think with your emotions, to 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 avoid debate because of, to, to a, debate somebody requires thinking. I mean, if those if those fellow students of your son had had actually engaged with him, well, they'd have to be thoughtful. They'd have you know if they wanted to persuade him not to wear that shirt, you know, they'd have to present a series of arguments. They'd have to really think. And people don't like thinking. Thinking is hard, uh, requires, uh, requires research, <laughs> requires patience, and they don't like to do it. They'd rather think with their hearts, you know, think emotionally. And uh, when you think emotionally, you start to take really stupid actions like canceling somebody or just yelling and screaming at them. And, uh, you know, what I, what I tell people is, and this is what my, my first book was about, I mean, my main book, Fortitude, um, which is written for adults. It's it's about learning to be a better person and bypass that that emotional reaction and stop and think before you react. Um, so, you know, you mentioned the Virginia Virginia governor's race. An interesting um, news story that came out today from National Review on that was, was a reminder that the Democrats of Virginia actually voted to. Um, so to lower the, the threshold, the standards for schools reporting sexual crimes uh, to the police. Now, why did they do this? Um, probably because they, they, they don't want uh, anybody to report anything bad that happens in girls' bathrooms. And as we know, recently this, this came out that one of the fathers arrested at a school board meeting, he was, he was angry for pretty good reason. It turns out his daughter was raped by a boy in a girl's bathroom, and this boy was dressed as a, a trans person wearing a skirt and assaulted her. And this is infuriating. And, you know, one is too many in this case. There's no reason that girls across the country should have to deal with boys coming into their bathroom. There's just, there's just no good reason for it, right? The, the, the discomfort of, in the, in the, of, of, of one does not justify the discomfort of a hundred. You know, and, and that's, it, it's, 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 it's tough on, you know, the people who are legitimately trans, it's tough on them. And we want to help them. But what you don't do is change society completely for them. Um, and then with all the consequences that come with it, and this is one of the most egregious ones. So, you know, according to what the Democrats voted for, that school wouldn't have even had to report that, r report that rate. That's, that's egregious. I mean, this is, this is, this is the reason that's why voters in Virginia should be electing Yunkin to their governorship. Uh, to save that state. By the way, speaking of Larry Sabato, we're talking with Congressman Dan Crenshaw. He wrote last week, and I don't, I mean, I, we, I would rather read National Review than his columns, but it's instructive to hear kind of what the other side's thinking. He reported that the, the amount of counties in the nation, over 3,000 counties, are conservative. 
And it's just these pockets of, of course, urban centers with mass people, some not working, and, and God bless all ethnicities, but there's some divides there. And and I, I just wonder how this will unfold in 2000, in the 22 elections. We have U.S. Senator Lisa Murkowski up, and we have our governor up, and we will see there. When you write this book, Fame, Blame, and the Raft of Shame, as you said, this is more geared towards kids and parents and the other for all of us, particularly adults. I'll post both links on our podcast cast on Facebook so people can purchase those. I purchased your your first book. I'm going to get this one for uh, friends. But do, what, do you really have to think constructively when you write it? I assume that you have to be careful and diligent as you write these for kids. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a kid's book. You know, it's a kid's book. <laughs> um, it, it's, and, and I work with uh, the authors from Brave as well, um, who are used to writing kids books. Because obviously I write well, I've written one adult book, maybe another one coming up in the next couple of years. But uh, but it's very appropriate because you're taking really tough issues and you got to figure out how to actually present that appropriately for kids. to a so, child. So Dan, show. hold that thought. Yeah. Congressman Dan Crenshaw, we got music. I know you got to go, but we'll just keep you on a couple more minutes and tell people how to purchase the book. Stay with us. Congressman Dan Crenshaw here on the Tom Anderson Show. This is the Tom Anderson Show, broadcasting live from the KVNT studios, 7 to 9 a.m., Monday through Friday. Fame, blame, and the raft of shame. No, that's not a Dr. Seuss book. It is from Congressman Dan Crenshaw from the great state of Texas, Republican. We were talking last segment about how you would write something like this. I have various yes, friends have. who have said we, we would love to write a book. You know, I'm talking to some last week about a kid's book, and I thought, what would you write? And we talked about it over dinner, and they said we would write about this issue or that issue. And I said, man, you don't want to be very careful because you want to cover all bases. I think you've done that here, uh, Congressman, and you are going to continue to write in the series. This one was on the cancel culture, fame, blame, and the wrath, the shame. First, how could someone purchase this? Because the, the inclination might be hey i can go anywhere online it's not that easy is it no yeah good question you, you got to go to bravebooks.com and specifically dan.bravebooks.com because uh, the publisher doesn't sell it on amazon and the reason for that is because it's a subscription so you can buy it as a subscription so you get a new book every month but like you said these are really well tailored for kids um, they're really appropriate for kids. It's wrapped into this saga of stories that all take place on Freedom Island. It's, it's just a really cool uh, storyline altogether. So dan.bravebooks.com is where you can get it. Perfect. Well, one last question. We were talking about National Virginia and off-air. I was telling you how our firm is helping some folks, New Hampshire, different places, uh, whether it be PACs or candidates. Yeah. Do you see any big change? Let's get political for a moment in the 2022 cycle. And what, what are you hearing? What are you seeing in terms of uh, or is it a little premature? Well, I, mean, I think if the election was held today, there'd be a, a pretty large Republican sweep. Uh, I don't know what the what it will be like in a year, but I, I don't see this administration wanting to improve anything. So it doesn't seem like uh, doesn't seem like our luck will change too much. Of course, you know, like Republicans can always screw it up. But right now, I think we've got a lot of great candidates. And if you want to look at Virginia, uh, that, that's a great candidate for Virginia, and uh, it's it's good. It makes me happy that uh, we're, we're choosing smart people in the primary. That, that's the key to winning, right? You, you've got to understand the district where you're running. And um, sometimes we screw that up. But for the most part, I think we've got a lot of great candidates, for instance, at the House. Uh, well, these House seats that are up for grabs. So I think we'll do really well. Yeah, me too. Well, thank you. Congressman Dan Crenshaw, his book, Fame, Blame, and the Raft of Shame. It was a pleasure. We'd love to get you back in the future. I'd love to be calling you U.S. Senator Dan Crenshaw. I hope that's in your future. Don't rule that out. We'll all support you and donate from the, from Alaska. I can guarantee that. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Thanks for having me. Great you betcha. Thank you, Congressman Dan Crenshaw.